Welcome back to Hackcode. In this video, we'll dive into lead code problem, Spiral Matrix. We'll explore how to traverse a matrix in a spiral order and break down the logic step by step. By the end, you'll have a solid understanding of how to approach this problem efficiently. Whether you're preparing for coding interviews or just brushing up on your matrix traversal skills, this video will give you a clear approach with visuals. Let's unravel the spiral matrix together. So given an M cross N matrix, return all elements of the matrix in spiral order. So basically, M cross N means like uh, it has M rows and N columns. And then we have to return all the elements of the matrix in a spiral order. So this is the given input. For this matrix, we have to output the list. So basically, how to do this, we have to do a spiral order traversal. So here, right from the top row, we have to iterate. And after that, we have to iterate the right column. And then we have to iterate the bottom row and then the left column. We have to ensure that we don't revisit the element which is already visited. So we, that means to say that we have to shrink our boundaries. So for let's say we uh, visited this top row, then we have to shrink this boundary and next time uh, we increment this top so that we don't uh, visit this again. So that's the idea guys. Second example, so this is the input matrix and the output is 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 12, 11, 10, 9, 5, 6, 7. So this is the output list. So here the constraints are m is equals to matrix length. That means to say that uh, m is equals to number of rows and n is equals to matrix of i of length. That means to say that n is equal to number of columns and uh, m and n are in the included range of 1 to 10. And matrix of i is in the included range of minus 100 to 100. So basically the elements within the matrix are in the inclusive range of minus 100 to 100. This is the ball update code given. The input is given as matrix and we have to output the list. So that means to say that uh, the moment we visit any uh, cell, we have to store that value. That's all. And then uh, at the end, we return that list. So personally, I have encountered this in my interviews. So it's very easy question. So if you don't get the idea, you can see the hints. What is the first hint given? Well, for some problems, the best way really is to come up with some algorithms for simulation. Basically, you need to simulate what our mask has to do. It's a not so clear hint, but let's see the second hint. So we go boundary by boundary and move inwards. That is the essential operation. First row, last column, last row and first column and then move inwards by one and repeat. That's all. That is all the simulation that we need. So basically guys, this is the main hint. Okay. We just discussed it. Right? We have to string the bodies. That's what they're saying in a hint. Before we get started, I want to remind you about our exclusive blind sign for post. This carefully curated collection covers essential coding interview problems to help you master the most common patterns and excel in your interviews. Whether you're prepping for fang level interviews or just sharpening your problem solving skills, these problems will ensure you're ready for anything. Even if the exact questions aren't asked, they cover all the important patterns. So be sure to check out our playlist and stay ahead of the competition. Let's dive into the solution. So I'll explain you in a way that you will never forget this approach at all. So basically here what we require, to we have to maintain some boundaries and then we have to string the boundaries because we don't want to iterate the same cell or same element again. That's all. So for that, first we traverse the top row and then we move the top boundary down. Here, that's what the first step. And the second step is simple. Is like we have to traverse this right column and move the right boundary left so that we don't traverse this right boundary again. Next step is we traverse the bottom row and then we move the bottom boundary up. So basically whatever we traverse, we have to make sure that we don't traverse it again. And last thing, we have to traverse the left column and move the left boundary right so that we don't traverse it again. So we have to repeat until all these boundaries overlap. So you got the idea, right? So basically we need to keep track of our boundaries. We have four boundaries, top, right, bottom, left. So we have to start from this point and do all the way iteration like here, 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 and here. So for this, so what are the coordinates here? So here, let's make the indexes. One, two, three. So the coordinates here are zero, zero. Here the coordinates are zero. This is zero through and third column, so zero, three. So here the coordinates are three comma zero. Here it is well known, three comma three. So basically here we need to start from here. We should not visit this again. We have to like increment this, whatever the pointer we keep track for this. So for that matter, uh, we keep track of this as a top. So top is one uh, pointer we keep. And then uh, we keep track of the other thing. This is what right, rightmost column. For that we keep track of right column as right. And then this is what bottom. So for that we have another pointer bottom. So, and then this is the left one, left column. So we have left. So basically once we iterate this one, we don't need to do this iteration again. So that's why we increment this top to the plus one. 
and then wing uh, one after the right is done we have to decrement it so we have to decrement right to be minus one and same for the bottom so bottom also since like it is uh, like it has a three next time it should not be at three it should be at two so we decrement this and then for left uh, like since it is here it has to move inward so that's why we do plus one this is how we trade okay so before we dive into the code i just want to remind the basics how do we access the matrix elements so basically we access using the formula matrix of row and column so here we represent this index one zero one two three zero one two so if you want to access this element uh, we use this using matrix what is the row we have index we have this as a zero row, and then we have the column as three so similarly how do we access this element so this element we access using matrix of what is the row it belongs to this belongs to second row on which column first column so yeah that's all so here let's look into the code now so firstly uh let me take a pointer here so here we initializing the list why do we want this list for because we want this list to store our spoiler or traversal because that's what we have to return right so and then after that we define our initial boundaries so what are the initial boundaries left is equal to zero and right is equal to length of matrix of zero why such length of matrix of zero because left is starting at here and right is going to be here right so for this uh, we have to get the column length how do we get the column length so this is the two dimensional matrix given so to get the column length we have to simply access one of the list in this so each list represent one row in this one so if you find the length of the matrix it would be number of rows so if you find the length of this list it would be number of columns that's what we do here so our range is left to right which is like zero to length of matrix of zero this is like uh from leftmost column to rightmost column that's all and top to bottom so this is like from top row to bottom row simple right so here uh it is zero and the bottom is the uh, length of matrix okay so this is just a tuple and packing approach if you're not aware of that so this would be assigned to zero and this would be assigned to this one same for this one as well so and then we uh, we have to keep iterating till our boundaries overlap right so once our boundaries overlap it means that we have already iterated this and then we should not iterate them again that's why we have to break out of the loop so for that reason we have to have this check and then we're doing in a while loop because uh, we have to do this plus continuously right that's why we have the while loop so here what we are doing for i in range left to right we have to iterate from here to here and uh, keep adding this to our result set so that's why we are doing result dot append matrix of top so top is what or topmost row so topmost row and this column keeps varying uh, from left to right that's why we do the top comma i so here i is what in this range from left to right so uh, once we done with this we don't want to do this again like we don't want to trade this again that's why we keep uh, incrementing our top pointer so we increment it to plus one so we moving the top boundary down you got the approach right and then uh, for the right column what we are doing is from top to bottom we are trading right so here what we doing uh, we just appending uh, matrix of i so here column is same but the rows are varying so for that we keep track of right minus one why right minus one right is our length of matrix of zero that means it is the length of the matrix this is the last valid index for a list is length of list minus one that's why we consider right minus one because right is initialized to the length of this list so that's why uh, we have to take right minus one uh, if we access that just like right we will get uh, the index out of range error because that would be greater than whatever elements we have. So always we should remember that we should not access the index that is less than zero or greater than or equal to the length of the list because that will raise an index error. So that's why we're doing this right minus one. So you would have got the doubt like why are we not doing right minus one here? Because our range function is exclusive of this one, right? So let me go to the range function definition. So here uh, we uh, this is the range function start, stop and step. So step is what like uh, what is the uh, number to generate uh, like what is the addition for each thing. So let me take with the clear example here. This so I'm just giving a quick refresh on range function. So if we specify just range and something like this two. This is the stop for this. Uh, like for this like we haven't specified the start and step. So it will generate till zero to one. Then if we specify with like range of two to four, it would be only. 2 to 3 because 4 is excluded so here generally if you don't specify the step it would be plus 1 so that's why we have 2 comma 3 if you specify the step let's take example of 2 and 5 and step is 2 that means to say that the difference should between each number should be 2 so 2 plus 2 is 4 
and that's all we don't have five because five is out of the range it is excluded similarly we can have a reverse range as well so like we specify five and then we specify two we specify minus one this would generate five four three two is excluded if you want to include two as well we have to do minus one here range five two of minus one and minus one then it would generate like five four three two so we got two here so basically uh, we're doing minus one to have it here in our range generated hope you got the idea of range function and uh, all these concepts are required here as well so that's why i told you so now we traverse our right column uh, for that we have to decrement the right because like we don't want to traverse the second that's why we decrement this right and next we have a check here if not of left less than right top less than bottom why because uh, like if left less than right only we have to proceed and then top less than bottom only have to proceed if this is not the case we have to break because that means to say that we have uh, iterated the rows and then we are iterating them again that should not be the case right? that's why we have a negation check here and then we're breaking it out of the loop so if this check fails it means to say that uh, the right is still greater than left and bottom is still greater than top then we can iterate so here we are doing that reverse range we just discussed here right the reverse range so here what we are doing we are iterating the range of right minus one left minus one and with a step of minus one because we have to traverse the bottom row from the right to left so here from the right we have to traverse to left so we have to do right minus one because uh, right is now the like length so for the length to convert an index we have to do it like right minus one and then left minus one because like we have to include this left as well else this left would not be included so that's why we do minus one and this you know right this is the step we have so here we are appending matrix of bottom minus one i why bottom minus one because we have iterating to the bottom row and then the column keeps changing from here to here that's why we're doing bottom minus one and i after this uh, since our iteration is done we have to decrement our bottom so we move the bottom boundary up after this what we have to do we just left with this traverse alone right traverse from the left column from bottom to top that's all so here we're using the same range function bottom minus one top minus one minus one we want this to be included and this top to be included that's why we're doing top minus one and minus one is stuck here and we are appending matrix of i uh, and this left one because here what is constant here this column is constant and then row keeps varying so that's why this is matrix of row and column and then uh, here this i is that uh, uh, row which is changing and column is what this left column that's why it is matrix of i and left so after this it will check if left is less than right and top is less than bottom if this condition fails we just break out of the loop and then we return the result so guys now what is the time complexity so here every element in the matrix is visited only once so the time complexity is o of m cross n because we have m into n elements right obviously if the ma like it has m rows and n columns it would be m into n elements so the time complexity is o of m n so space complexity also o of m n because like whatever elements we visited we have to keep track in our result so that's why the space complexity also o of m n so I got the code ready here. Let me try running this. So yeah, it's accepted solution. So let me try submitting this. So cool, it beats almost 44% of users. If you submit this again, that would be a different number. This is because it depends on uh, how much requests the server handles. See, now it beats 73%. So don't rely on this beats percent. If your solution is pretty much optimized, then we don't need to care about this. So congrats, guys. You just learned this. Your interviewer would be pretty much impressed by the way you saw this. And this is a wrap on solving the spiral matrix problem. If you found this breakdown useful, drop a comment below and share your thoughts. Don't forget to like the video and spread the words to your fellow coders and hit that subscribe button for more in-depth coding tutorials. See you in the next one.